Hey everybody, it's your boy Prof Truffle. We're back again with another video after like two years almost. Well, it's a Salmonella video, and he's back for from two years ago, I guess, as well. So makes sense somehow, somewhere, in some way. Let's go. <laughs> Definitely makes sense. Hey kids, I just woke up from a nap I took in January of 2020 and boy are my arms tired. Let's see what I missed. Yeah, bro. We missed a lot, I think, brother. Hmm. Wars. Queen's dead, war in Ukraine, the town oh, yeah. is bad. That bitch died. What is... Holy shit. They made a movie called Scoob. On Did they actually make a movie? What? God damn it. I'm surprised scooby is not female-ish. In that one. It ended global pandemic, Space Jam 2, some Gotta be careful with some other jokes. Yep, that just about covers it. Anyway, we all know about the scientific names of animals, but did you ever yes, wonder we do. what they actually mean? To find out, we must look to taxonomists. The oh, guys quick backstory on me, actually, for this. I actually almost went to med school, okay? And in Bulgaria, going to med school means you gotta memorize 8th, 9th, 10th, and 11th grade biology and chemistry. The whole of it. All those three years. You gotta know that shit from back end to front end. And I got accepted. But then I decided that eight years of school just ain't for me after, you know, like a thousand years of school. So, fuck that. Yeah. So I should know some of these of in Bulgarian, to classify which is organisms. And different boy, are they English. Convoluted. First you got the big A, domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, like, genus, species. Listen, I studied these in Bulgarian. I kind of know them. What the hell is a phylum? Phylum? The hell? A family? I mean, I got one, kind of. I've seen plenty of mnemonic Broken devices one, but... for this, but since the D just showed up in the 90s and is still disputed by some scientists, he's usually not included. So allow me to suggest a few. Dizzy kids puke cereal on fairground staff. I mean... Dumb kittens pushing cups over feeds growing spite. <laughs> Donkey Kong's p <laughs> oh, fucking g Serendipitous. I thought Donkey Kong had balls. Why does he have a P? You know? It could be a penis. But that's very long for a penis word. The way this whole thing works differs yeah. slightly depending on which kingdom you pick. So today we'll be I bet y'all miss the those amazing board, jokes, huh? One's the coolest, and I'm in it. So what constitutes each taxon is pretty arbitrary. They basically just serve to taxon. act as another set of branches in the tree that taxonomists build. The one exception is species, which is generally defined as any group of animals that can have babies with each other that aren't sterile freaks. Mule, liger, zedonk, skunk ape. They can live fulfilling what lives. What the hell is that last blank, one? So they don't count. On the other hand, in our innumerable trespasses against God, we can make things like Chidane Danes, which actually work, so... Okay, I got one question for this. First off, who's the dad in this picture? Okay, because if it's a small one, it needs a ladder. And... Some more biology questions about how the sperm travel to the... You know. And if it's the big one, that small one needs to sue the big one for, you know, the R word. Maybe it's a kinky freak. It looks like a kinky freak, doesn't it? Little motherfucker. Dogs are dogs are dogs. Besides species, though, it's the Wild West in here. Plenty of times, eight tiers isn't even enough for scientists, so they just stick new sublevels in between. Legions, cohorts, tribes, series, the divisions. Hell? And if you want to keep going, it you became can a Roman army. prefixes on any of these for even more parf. There's even subspecies, which the more pedantic of you may think to yourselves that creating names for subspecies at all kind of undermines the single somewhat agreed upon definition in the whole tree. To that, my friends, taxonomists say, uh. But while that's pretty complex, the actual names <laughs> Is that what they say? Like, actually? Names themselves are pretty God easy to it. wrap your head around. So Damn. taxonomists may hide behind their fancy Greek and Latin. The Vulgate is no substitute for wit. Now, I've scraped through the scientific names of a load of species. God and most of them can Damn. Split into a few categories. The simplest ones are the animals that already have names it's in Greek or Latin. Shit. It's a lion. I'm calling it Leo. Done. Tiger. It's a tigris. Cat. It's a caddis. Easy. Multi-word names can be translated the same way. For the golden eagle, we got Aquila chrysatos. Old eagle eagle. They decided to be a show. It's 
a gold eagle eagle. Greek and Latin, essentially the same though. But if a species eagle, is too gold specific eagle. or exotic for a one-to-one -one translation, that's when you gotta get a little creative. A lot of the time, inspiration comes from just giving the creature the old once-over and pointing out some cool-looking body. God damn, that thing has small legs like me. Body part. Generally, the more but it has no arms. Identifying feature it is, the more likely What's your excuse? Get for example, Emo? homeboy took one look at this thing and said, "Yo." Okay. Come on, bro. That looks like a condom that's been used too many times. And there are one use thing. You don't reuse condoms. Jesus Christ. Oh, red triangle slug. I'm going on break. We call this thing a fucking unicorn. Almost like that means one <laughs> horn or something. Also, some guy hey, that makes sense, that kinda. Octopus and said, well, all they got is heads and feet. I'm gonna call them head foot. And now biologists everywhere say cephalopod unironically. Matter of fact, if it's got feet, you know that means? part of its name somewhere. Oh you got my god. Feet, six feet, eight feet, ten feet, we got sunk. Feet, equal feet, both feet, double feet, stomach feet, lit. What the hell is that ugly thing? Four feet, six feet, eight feet, ten feet, two feet, eight equal feet, both feet. What the hell is that thing on the right? Jesus. It's a kind of shrimp? Brother. Who invented that shit? Which drunk god? Double feet, stomach feet, lip feet, sucker feet, wing feet, big feet, slow feet, or feet, both feet, joint feet, no feet, 10,000 feet, cow's feet, spade feet, cat feet, small feet. If it doesn't cat look feet, that interesting, panda? another thing to point out is where you found it. This could be a territory like American bear or Siamese crocodile, or just a habitat like woods macaque or Yo, that bear is rat. Fat. That's boring. We need to look at the men behind rat. the magic and what drives and motivates them. Now, if there's one thing that the scientific community loves, it's clout. And there's no better way to go down in history True. plastering your everybody loves cloud shit you found but not all fields have the same volume of things the same the old john hancock over on the one end you got physicists just making up their own slightly different form ronchen rutherford i mean i've heard of one of these so yeah of ionizing radiation measurement. And even then, only the top dogs got away with it. Now, zoology, any little goober flouncing through the underbrush can say, this one has 13 spots, but He's the got one the special the only got 11. I will call him Splinkus's Ladybird. Alternatively, plenty of biologists have given shout-outs to their contemporaries, both other biologists and those across the academic gamut, from geologists to physicists to explorers and... That more. rock? Naturally, Darwin's got Geologist a makes sense. background characters get immortalized one way or another. The Darwin's Wall Gecko. Now that's cool. Geckos are cool. Who are Thompson, Grant, Summering, Erlinger, Speak, and Cuvier? I don't know, but they've all got gazelles, so they must be pretty cool. Of course, other times, the name checks go to people who had fuck all to do with anything except for one taxonomist being a fan of theirs. Plenty of popular celebrities have species oh, named God. after them, but since all the big cute stuff was found and branded a while ago, <laughs> most of these idols are commemorated through repulsive little invertebrates. You got Scaptia, Beyonce, -A. the only similarity I can gather here is Queen Bee, looks like a bee, but... And that bee's got fat ass, you know what I mean? Not a real bee. There's Anomphilus jagarius, an old stone named after an old stone. In 2007, <laughs> one Jason Bond, a professor of biology... That was good, UC that was Davis, good. ...dubbed this little dude Mermechia fila Neil Youngy to honor his Neil Young. musician. Which caused my man Stephen Colbert to go on TV and profess his utter indignation at not having a spider named after himself. So naturally, the next year, Jesus. Bond actually went on the Colbert Report to announce the naming... I have no idea who these people are, by the way. ...apostagist Stephen Colbert. So... So, if that gives any of you epic biologists out there any ideas, you know, I wouldn't be opposed. Please, I would do anything. For the love of God, I'll even take a liking. The world of politics is by no means immune to this phenomenon. Obama alone is fucking nine. As do a little What? Obama don gracilis. What even is that? What the hell is that? Jesus, some sort of worms? The presidents. Trump's got a moth with funny hair, Bush has a fungus beetle, Reagan's a wasp, Carter's got a darter, and so forth. Holy Even shit. Austria's most famous painter got the honor through this blind cave beetle. Mind you, it was 1930. I'm not pronouncing so you can that. Only blame the guy a tiny bit. Hitler actually wrote him a letter saying, he still oh, could kind of. My little entomalo mensch, and then went on to do, you know, Hitler things. Fun fact, not only was this beetle stuck with just about the worst name you could have, it's also now facing extinction solely because oh. of its value to Nazi memorabilia collectors. Guess old habits die hard. Huh? Oop, fictional characters have their fair share of species under their belt. Do On the topic they? of evil beetles, this one's named after Darth Vader because he kind of looks like his helmet, I guess. This was actually named by the same guy who did the bush one and belongs to the same genus. Hmm. There's also this mite, genus Darth Vaderum, which is a lot more- Yo, is that his vagina? Do, do mites have vaginas? Asking the real questions. 
accurate and frightening. In 2012, a single Where's bone from the eye socket of a hitherto oh. unidentified theropod dinosaur was being studied. And suddenly, under the light of the full moon, the guy working with the specimen had his neck cover with hair and his lips clench into a pog and his endocrine system fill with soy and he said, it's just like the eye of Sauron. And then he started chewing on Funko Pops and sweating cream of meme and snorting G Fuel and shitting D20s everywhere until the prostate Jesus. stimulation made him. The dino's genus is now God damn. from Eye of Sauron. The spider was the not that bad. Gryffindor because it looks like the sorting hat. Spongebob it does though. Not a sponge, but a fungus. The legendary birds from Pokemon each have their own. You guessed it, beetle. And the list goes on. Motre Zapdos Articuno. I don't remember these Pokemon at all. Scientists Not a big Pokemon fan. Who knew? Anyway, while this all seems kind of chaotic, there is some method to the madness. One rule is the principle of priority. This states that once somebody publishes their chosen name for a species for the first time, that's the name, and other taxonomists Forever. typically can't change it. This has led to plenty of misnomers coined by whoever got their foot in the door first, particularly in the case of the guys doing this stuff before we had the luxury of genetic analysis. Here's mm. one. Red panda? Nah. Shining cat. By the way, best animal in the whole ass universe. Okay. Cutest thing in the world. At Shiny cat. Eh, I can see it. They're actually about as close to cats as they are to actual pandas, so whatever. Here's yeah, two. they're cats cute like cats. Chinensi. Eaten there? Sure. Native? Chinensi. Only off by around half a globe, where literally all hot peppers came from. This principle holds close true enough. even if someone... Well, what if you go the other way, though? Hmm? Hmm? thinks they found a new species, only to later discover that it was already named. For example, in 1824, one John Edward Gray documented the plain zebra, calling it Echis or Birchell's horse, named after Birchell's a horse. naturalist of the day. Little did he know, back in 1785, that was some a classified this character as the quagga. Wait, the last qu is that? Oh yeah, that was a donkey zebra mix, right? Waga died in a Dutch prison in 1883. So, why do we care? Well, in the 2000s, scientists decided... Okay, there must be more to... Why was a horse-zebra hybrid in Dutch prison? What did it do? to scrape some gunk off a dry quagga pelt and study its DNA. And from that they realized, wait a minute, apparently this guy and zebras could have, you know, made a little plaid in the hay together. So technically they're one species, and today they're both called quagga. Sounds kind of asinine, but then again so does asinus, and that worked out fine. Just to maintain the distinction, the extinct subspecies was renamed quagga quagga, so you know it's quagga quagga. quagga. This double naming convention has been done with a lot of subspecies. In really? Fact, wild wild horse, spotted spotted panther, or my favorite Bro. gorilla gorilla gorilla. Just like, yeah, it's the gorilla's gorilla that ever grilled fuck you want from me a closely related role also states okay what's the difference between a gorilla a gorilla gorilla a gorilla 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 yeah and that's kind of hard to say three times for me that the names of all taxa have to be unique so if two people coincidentally name any tax on the same thing the older one okay. gets to stay and the new one gets the boot like if you saw Bro. a genus called echidna you'd think it was you know an echidna right well no that'd that, make too much sense that's cute kind of like a bird and a you know that Little armadillo thing. For a while it was true, from 1797 to 1811. Echidna. Then it was pointed out that someone else already called a genus of moray eels echidna back in 1788. So the real echidna had to be changed to tachyglossus, or quick tongue. Then a decade later, a dude did the same thing for a genus of vipers. Had a girlfriend like that. 22 years passed, people discovered the same thing, and they were renamed to bitis, because they bitis. bitis. That one Aww. at least made a bit of sense, That's given cute. that the original echidna from Greek mythology was half lady, half snake, but who cares at this point. Not anyway, I've just barely scraped the surface of all the goofy names out there, so feel free to post more down below. That's all I've got for now. Please okay. the surface of all the goofy names Listen. out there. So feel free. Hey, he must have done that on purpose. Come on, look at that hand. Tell me that's not a cock. It even has the ball sack. It even curves a little at the top. Come on, brother. That is a cock. If I've seen one, I've seen some. Free to post more down below. That's all I've got. For no, now. I mean. Until next time, I'm Sam Manella, and see I'll you see you in 2025. <laughs> I don't think we can make jokes like that, brother. Anyway, I, I it was Prof Chop. I hope you enjoyed it. I did. And I will see you not in 2025, tomorrow. Come on.